we would be remiss if we didn't address the sniffing. Uh, so I think it is important to give some context to you'll see your libertarian conservative friends or Republicans even, you know, posting, oh, he's a sexual predator. All right. Well, let's take a look at what that means exactly and give you some of the facts on that so you can decide for yourself. Um, Biden has been accused of inappropriate contact with women at public events, such as embracing, kissing, gripping and touching. Is that wrong? In March of 2019, former Nevada Assembly, <laughs> Harry's shaking his head. Uh, just kidding. Uh, in March of 19, former Nevada Assemblywoman Lucy Flores alleged that Biden had touched her without her consent at a 2014 campaign rally for lieutenant governor in Las Vegas. Flores recounted her experience with Biden in an essay for New York Magazine describing an incident in 2014 when Biden came up behind her, leaned in, smelled her hair, and kissed her on the back of the head. Amy Lapos spoke out to say that at a fundraiser in 2009, Biden touched her face, leaned in for what she thought was an attempt to kiss her on the mouth, and then rubbed her nose with his. Biden has also been crit criticized for being too handsy with children. At a swearing-in ceremony for Chris Coons, Biden held the upper arm of the senator's preteen daughter, whispered into her ear, and kissed the side of her forehead. Coons has said that Biden's words and actions did not bother his daughter, who has known Biden her whole life. On March 31st, 2019, Biden released a statement saying, In my years on the campaign trail and in public life, I had offered countless handshakes, hugs, expressions of affection, support, and comfort, and not once, never, did I believe I acted inappropriately. It is suggested I did so. I will listen respectfully, but it was never my intention. Days later... He released a video on Twitter saying that he will be more, quote, mindful about respecting personal space in the future. Now, earlier this year, Tara Reid, a former aide to Biden, accused then-Senator uh, of sexually assaulting her 27 years ago. Biden has denied the allegation. Uh, he essentially cornered her in a parking garage and put his hands in places he shouldn't have. And uh, she says that she reported it to his office and uh, they say that didn't happen. There's no record of it. And, uh, you know, her mom called into Larry King. There's a ton of contemporary witnesses. Frankly, there's more evidence of her story than uh, Blasey Ford or anything against Roy Moore, um, which is why so many people on the right were so outraged that this didn't get any coverage and it took weeks of shaming the New York Times and other publications to take this seriously. And it wasn't until the, the Me Too movement finally started to go, we can't be this hypocritical, guys, that, that it started to get some traction, rightly so, good for them. Um, in, uh, now, Joe, now, those records that would confirm or deny, because we need, to, we need evidence of this. Her word, because she's talking about Joe Biden, isn't good enough, unlike Blasey Ford's. Not diminishing Blasey Ford, but, I mean... It really pisses me off when there's no consistency on this stuff. A principle matters more when it's not politi politically expedient. I mean, if you like on the Me Too stuff and on racial issues, you've probably noticed what some would consider a drift leftward, but it's really more a, of a drift towards decency and uh, and empathy. And when it comes to how women are treated in this country, it's absolutely abysmal. And if you actually take the time, sit and talk to your female friends and the women in your life uh, on a deep level and actually listen, this stuff's very common. And the Me Too movement in, in a lot of ways has been very, very healthy for this country in talking about that, that sort of thing. Uh, they do that movement a disservice when they don't take this stuff seriously. And that pisses me off. And uh, I think it should, you know... It should make you mad because it matters that women are being mistreated and every political group does it, including the Libertarian Party, and it needs to stop. And we have to hold our own accountable first and foremost. Um, you know, this show was talking about how, you know, in 2018, 2016, I think it was 2016, having to have basically bodyguards walk around with, you know, one of our friends at, at the Libertarian Party convention. You know, so another thing we've been talking about years before the party started to take it seriously. Um, those who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, uh, so now that Senate record is being held by the University of Delaware. 
In 2011, Joe Biden donated 1,800 boxes of documents and 415 gigabytes of electronic records from his time as senator to his alma mater. It includes committee reports, drafts of legislation and correspondence. And under an agreement made with the university, the records were set to become public last year. However, the records are being kept secret. Following new terms, the university posted on its website just before Biden made his presidential campaign official. Starting in 2011 and for years after, the university had described the terms of the agreement as keeping the paper sealed for two years after Biden retires from public office. Magically, as he ran for president, they adjusted the language and the requirements. Uh, on the day before Biden announced his campaign, the university changed the way it described those terms. Instead of citing his departure from public office, it said after he re two years after he retires from public life, whichever is later. It does not define what public life actually is. A spokeswoman for the University of Delaware says the entire collection is unavailable as he's currently running for office and he is in public life. Since retirement for anyone, not just public figures, takes different forms, I can't speculate beyond that. Now, in July, the Daily Caller, New Daily Caller News Foundation and Judicial Watch announced they're suing the university, and uh, they filed a lawsuit in the Superior Court of Delaware on a FOIA, a Freedom of Information request, both groups made back in April, hoping to get the records. Uh, they said they, the university should do the right thing and turn over Biden's public records as required by law. Partisan gamesmanship by a public university is unseemly and unlawful. If they don't want to do the right thing, we will force them in court. Biden's Senate records became the subject of scrutiny after Tara Reid came forward and suggested that her formal complaint documented harassment in Biden's office might be stored at the university. Uh, so there you go. That is uh, 